game is brought to you in HD TV by HP. And the officials for game one, Carl Hess, Curtis Shaw, and J.D. Collins. And the final four is underway. Let's see the matchups early in this game. Anderson on Collison. Collison still weaving out high, now over to ship. Anderson with those long arms and has size differential about any guard that he plays against. That's what makes him so effective. Westbrook with Rose on him. Dishes nice down low. Mba Mute reverses. And the Bruins work it around brilliantly and get the easy bucket. And one of the things about Westbrook, when Collison got injured, Westbrook had to become the point guard. It's made him so much more versatile as he showed on that play. Now in the other end to match up more than what I expected. Ship on Anderson. Spin move, Rose, and the freshman short off the front of the rim. Dorsey just throws it up wildly, and the Bruins, Umba Mute, comes out with it. Collison is quick, but he's going to have a hard time with that power move that Rose has going to the basket using that upper body strength. Do you think we'll see Collison on Rose all night, I, or I will Westbrook so. some? I think Westbrook will have to move over to him. Now it's Westbrook and Rose at this end. Here's Ship, stutter step move through traffic, and he's going to bring it back out. Mba Mute takes the jumper, and it's over the top of the backboard. It'll belong to Memphis. The Tigers had led for 79 consecutive tournament minutes before that opening basket by UCLA as they gave up an opening hoop to Michigan State. Then steamrolled the Spartans, had a 50 to 20 lead on them at halftime. And here you see that Collison Rose matchup. Westbrook, he can look anybody in the eye. Although he's 6'3 and Chris Douglas Roberts about six foot five and a half. Westbrook can play tall. Dozier. He's going to drive on Umba Mute, short with the bank shot. Love has the rebound. Boy, he takes up space, doesn't he? Averaging a double-double on the season, the Pac-10 player of the year, the freshman Kevin Love, who really hasn't touched it down at this end. He's outside. He'll take a jump shot from there if it gets out his way. Umba Mute did not have a clean handle. Collison scrapes it off the floor. It was right on the sideline, but not out. And Ooh. Chip hits a three. Jimmy, that's a huge shot right there. The young man has really been struggling and believe me, if he can make that shot, I don't know if anybody can beat UCLA in the Final Four. He, I think he's that critical from the perimeter. First five of the night go to the Bruins. Now it's Douglas Roberts, the All-America. Jumper, yes. Decide to pull up and shoot over Westbrook using that height advantage. Nothing is touched with love on the inside with Dorsey playing him. Let's see how long it takes to get him the ball down inside. Shaky pass. Dorsey went for the steal. Love tries to force the pass. Rose was the one who tipped it away to cause the steal. Now it's Douglas Roberts. Puts it on the hip. Puts it up with the left hand up and in. That was some maneuver, wasn't it, Jim? Wow. The way he scores is so unconventional, his shot. Well, he is just a tremendous slasher. He showed he can pull up and take the jumper, but his real advantage on people is because of his size, put the ball on the floor and slash by. Now they work it to Love on the blocks. Dorsey behind him. Takes his first shot, the freshman hits the soft hook. Dorsey, one of the few guys in college basketball that can body up with Kevin Love and not be beaten. Rose banks it home, and he spins his way free. Trying to get him on transition, Douglas Roberts. Never should have passed that ball back. Back to Schitt, not this time with his jumper. Westbrook in the corner, still has it for UCLA. Got that over Dorsey. Ship hits his second three here in the first three and a half minutes. Yeah, what I love about that is when a guy is in a slump and he's not wanting to take his shot, he very seldom is in any kind of a balance or rhythm to make him. Ship has come right out at the veteran that he is looking to take jump shots. His confidence has been so low here for over a month. But what a start here at the Final Four. Now Douglas Roberts again driving, and that's going to be a foul against Westbrook. Westbrook made the save, and Chip was able to fire it up for a second time in that possession. And Jim, you notice he didn't hesitate at all. Squared right up with the shot. We know he's a good scorer. He has been just in a horrendous slump starting in February. Had a little bit of a, a whiplash yesterday in practice, as we had Ben Holland told us yesterday, but it looks like he's in good shape now. Douglas Roberts, CDR, they call him. He's the number nine all-time scorer in Memphis history, Keith Lee. Is the all-time scorer for the Tigers. He was the one who took him to the 85 final for the last time they made it here, as you see. Taggart in, Dozier out. Taggart is such a valuable 
Six man, 6'10 sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia. And Jim, so much has been said about this Memphis free throw shooting, but they have shot from the free throw line extremely well in postseason play, but they were 12th in their league. Only shot 60% on the year. And Rose a little too close. Draws the whistle. One of the few times that you'll find Rose going up against a similar athlete. There's no question that he made the bump on Westbrook. Cheap foul, one you don't want from one of your leading players. Trying to beat him down the floor in the transition, aren't they, Billy? They had the long pass that was almost picked, and that time they were racing down the floor and drew the foul. That's what's interesting about the way Ben Holland coaches. They'll take advantage of the break when it's there. Love nice got pump fake. Dorsey to the floor, comes into the paint, back of the rim, no. Dorsey points ahead, says take off. Anderson hears the call. I love the way that Memphis is pushing his ball up the floor to try to get the make this more of an 80 point ball game. Antonio Anderson delivers the three. Good strategy on their part. They don't want to play half court at a time with UCLA. Tigers at the lead now at 11 10. Back with Westbrook. Short jumper, yes. Bruins now by one. Now I wonder if we're going to see a change. Anderson going over there. Let Rose go ahead on the ship. I think that'd be a better matchup for Memphis. And here's that driving ability, even against a defender, Pac-10 defender of the year like Westbrook. Goes right by him. Westbrook already with one foul, really didn't challenge him. And Rose drove right past him. Well, Westbrook is going to have to move those feet because Rose will continually do that. He can push the ball up the floor as well as anybody, and with his strength, can finish. Love. Goes under the cylinder, no call, blocked by Dorsey. And here comes the push. Going center, it's Douglas Roberts laying it in. And you can see right now that this is becoming a Memphis-style basketball game. They are pushing the ball up the floor and beating UCLA to the punch. This is not the kind of game they played two years ago in the Elite Eight out in Oakland. Jim, they missed 14 straight three-point shots in that game. Collison nice up with soft shot. They go. Up ahead, Anderson. Ship's going to challenge. No. Anderson dunks it down with force. And a timeout, UCLA. Bruins had scored the first five, but now they're down five at the first break. Memphis shooting 70%. UCLA with the most championships of all time and back for a third consecutive time in the Final Four. Jim, it's kind of interesting, UCLA with John Wooden. It was 15 years before he won his first title, and once he did, he went 44-3 and three in the NCAA tournament, 18 straight Final Four wins, 38 straight NCAA tournament wins for the Wizard of Westwood, the greatest coach of championships in the history of college basketball. Hard to believe it took until year 16 before he won his first championship. Underneath, Keith has come in, draws the foul on Taggart as Love lobbed it over the top of that defense. We have another break in the action. Memphis has hit its last seven shots. A lot of them close range, even dunks. Lead by five. Jim Nance with Billy Packer here at the Final Four. And again, all the ones are here. UCLA, the most Final Fours. North Carolina, second all time. Kansas, fourth. And this is the third, marks the third Final Four appearance. We're very proud Memphis program as well. 1973 when they met UCLA in the championship game and again in 1985. Jim, you know another thing that's interesting when you talk about the quality of the four teams here. First time ever, as everybody knows, four number one seeds get to the Final Four, but all four teams had 30 win seasons. So you talk about the quality from November right on through to selection Sunday. So these, these clubs have proved to be very worthy. Keith comes into the ball game and you know, this is kind of interesting. The young man did not have much of a year, and then Western Kentucky, 18 points, 12 rebounds to give a big lift to UCLA. That was in the Sweet 16. He hits both free throws. That last foul, by the way, was charged to Joey Dorsey, not Taggart. Going inside, nice double down by Keith. Here's Taggart with a three, and look at the big man shoot. Jim Taggart really was out of position on that play. He should have been, as soon as he saw the release by Keith, he should have broken to the basket and had a layup, but instead he stands out there and buries the three. Everything working for Memphis right now. Taggart, who had a hot hand in Houston last week, gave him some big minutes off the bench as he so often has this season. Another reason he probably should have been inside, he was 0 for 5 for three part of that shot, so it's his first three of the year. Collison works it. Love left alone. Dorsey hung too long with the guard. 
Should have gone back in and followed up Love. You're worrying about a guard taking a jump shot as opposed to Love getting an easy shot inside. Now Rose, back out, Taggart, same spot, short this time. Powelson snags it out of the air. Not a high percentage play for Memphis when they're playing so well. Again, bounce pass inside. UCLA inbound underneath after the kick. Bob Mute comes back in. Near the end of this game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy and American Revolution. Here's Westbrook with a three. Hits it. And it's a one-point lead for Memphis. And the Tigers are brought in for the first time. Willie Kemp, number one, handling the ball right now. Nice step back. Kemp not ready to defend on that particular play. Taggart was taken out by John Calipari. He didn't like that shot selection either. Douglas Roberts. So far, there's been no answer for the swirling dervish wingman. Billy, you were there on Thursday night at the opening ceremony, the NCAA salute, and John Calipari called Douglas Roberts buckets because he doesn't do it always the most conventional way as Westbrook now backs up his three with a driving basket. Well, he just Kent. knows how Douglas Roberts to make baskets, buckets. Kent taking a school on two plays defensively. Westbrook really took advantage of him. Here he is again. Tough shot. No, that was a wild throw at the basket. Almost stolen away by Anderson. Westbrook. What a rebound by Dorsey. Maybe got away with over the back. He took a chance going over that back. Kemp waits for everything to settle. Misses on the three. And there's over the back on Dozier. He didn't realize how strong Love was. He hit Love and Love never moved. A lot of energy in this building. Great pace early. Love and the Brewers are just one down. A high octane start to the first semifinal. Memphis with six fast break points, and Billy, the field goal percentages are way up. Way up for these defensive clubs. How about Douglas Roberts and his start? Yeah, well, such a tough matchup. You can see he uses his size to go ahead and shoot over the top, then he uses his ability to penetrate, go right or left hand to the basket. He had a tough shot that he took, and other than that, he's had a flawless first half. Jimmy had six points and six rebounds as a non-starter in that game against UCLA where they lost in the regionals. So he gets a little breather, 10 points for him. Lorenzo Mata Real has come in for UCLA, number 14. Great experience player for them. Was started in final four games. You see where Dorsey plays him, though. He's not going to go out there because he knows he's not going to take any kind of outside shot. Real is going to be a screener in this offense. Bamute, baseline shot over everything. This club on the floor right now for UCLA lacks some scoring. An opportunity here for Memphis to get a little bit of a margin. Memphis has brought in number 20, Donnell Mack. Who can fire it up from three. Tops on the team this year, three-pointers made. It's Dozier pulling up with a jumper. Nobody inside for rebounding, and there's the ball. He touches keep on the hands. Nobody inside for offensive rebounds. You can watch exclusive video of Amen Corner Live, plus 15 and 16 live action from those two magnificent holes. And bonus coverage of the entire field with Masters Extra at cbsports.com slash Masters Live and Masters.org. Here's Rose. Shoots right over the top of Collison. Collison hasn't had to face this kind of power point guard. And he is playing over the top of him right now. Rose has six. And the Tigers are up by three. Ben Holland had to put his, some of his starters down to the pace of this game is much faster than what UCLA would like to play. Taggart now on a switch is on Collison over the screen. Collison had a good look, but Taggart pulls it down. Here comes Memphis up ahead quickly. Anderson with a three. Rose comes in again with that strength. He didn't realize he was open, Jim, when he got that rebound. He was looking for some body contact. Keith holds on to the rebound this time. Back come the Bruins. Nice screen by Keith. Allison couldn't turn the corner. See, even if you beat a guy like Anderson, Jim, and you're a small guard, he's got the length to stop your jump shot. Bamute over the Keith screen. This is the short shot on the floor of the reach-in. It's going to be called against Keith of UCLA. 
The bench is much more productive, isn't it, for Memphis? It, it's kind of obvious. They bring guys on the floor that can shoot and rebound. Kevin Love is coming back in, but you talk about that Memphis bench, Billy. They are going to be without now. Here at the Final Four, Andre Allen, the senior who was suspended from the team a couple of days ago for violating a team policy. And that was a uh, blow to this team because he's an important backup at point guard. Now here's the matchup I thought. It's Westbrook on Rose right now. He's got good size on him and loves to sit down. A tremendous defender. Rose on Westbrook. Nice block out by Love on Dorsey. Westbrook setting some great screens outside for the guards. Great action by Westbrook. He was patient and he knocks it home. Gives him nine now on the game. Jim, what's happening to the Memphis players? They're going behind those solid screens and the UCLA guards are just turning the corner and going inside. Good recognition by UCLA. Anderson. Love tips it right back to him. Here's Mack. He can fire the three. Down and out. Pulled down by Bob Mute. And Mute, Keith, and Love now are starting to make their presence felt on the on the rebounds. Memphis not doing a good job on the offensive glass. Here comes the screen again, this time by Love. This for the lead right back. Again long with the shot. Keith tips. No, out to Mack. Quick release to Rose. Gets passed with a nifty dribble. It lays it in. And you know he dribbled right by Westbrook. Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. Ship guns it from outside. Quick shot. Got to question that shot because you don't want to make this pace too quick if you're UCLA. Anderson with a three. Well, that was wild. And it got past everyone. Bounces right through the lane, back out high. Here's Mack floating through. Tipped up Dorsey. And cleared by Love. Well, the frenetic pace is what Memphis wants, but they've got to have much better shot selection than that. Ben Howland was screaming for a timeout. Bruins to the bench. Down three. UCLA and Memphis, eight minutes to go. First half with Kansas and North Carolina on the floor after this one. That was a timeout called by UCLA with a second to go before Got a, a television timeout and the next whistle. That's two so far that uh, UCLA has used that might not have been necessary. Jim, the pace of this game is very frenetic. It's really in favor of the way that Memphis would like to play. So Coach Holland, he, he decided to go ahead and start resting his players early. And uh, of all the people, and, and maybe, and I won't call it a weakness, but Love is not a guy that wants to play in a fast-paced ball game. Love asking for it down low. How about those hands? Taggart behind. Here comes the double up. And the ball's knocked out. And goes to the right man here. Over to Dozier. Jim Rose is developing not only into a guy that can score, but he can make plays. He's got tremendous ability to cover the floor offensively. That was a perfect pass on the break. I didn't even realize he saw the trailing man fill in the lane. Cover the floor and see the floor. Yep. Now they got the timeout. The under eight timeout as Memphis leads it by five. Jim, watch the eye of the tiger. This outstanding freshman guard, Derek Rose. UCLA actually had better defensive balance than did Memphis. Rose, in effect, created a fast break all by himself. Terrific court awareness. Eight points for Rose, a couple of assists, no turnovers, and a steal. Now, that last whistle was an inadvertent whistle, and the inbounds pass goes right off the toe of Russell Westbrook. It'll now go back to the Tigers. Just a couple of, like, uh, absent-minded turnovers Keith dropping a rebound with no one around him that ball just inbounding going right off the foot of Westbrook and that was by two very experienced guards very sloppy play here comes the screen on Collison nice step out by Love and a steal it's Westbrook Rose defending oh. what a block by Douglas Roberts Collison they 
They wanted a five second or a walk, and they got the walk. Nice referee by John Calipari, and here you see the length of Memphis. Rose goes up. Douglas Roberts completes the play. Comes right on the heels of the steal or turnover, which was the first turnover of the game committed by Memphis. Took them over 13 minutes. And the, it did not come the, from the guard play, Jim. Now watch Love step out on these screens. That was a pick and roll. Taggart puts up the shot with the left hand, and Dorsey maintains possession for Memphis. Dorsey with six rebounds. Here's Kemp. Stuck? No. Finds Taggart. Over Love. Follow up Dorsey. No. Dorsey's got to make that play. Love did a good job handling both big men on the play inside. Got such a wide body and used it well. UCLA with all of its starters back on the floor. Memphis with two subs, Kemp and Taggart. It was a back screen that time for Westbrook. It didn't quite work out. He was looking for the lob on it. Now the switch. Dorsey goes back over, finds his man. And it was a good idea because Love was ready to post up down low. Five on the shot clock, Collison. Back to the rim, no. And it's Dorsey. No, normally UCLA eliminates those second chance points. Follow up, Taggart! Love was laying down on the other end of the floor, never got down court. Memphis has its largest lead of the night at seven. Jim, fast break points. UCLA this year, 498 opponents, 185. This game completely opposite. Now it's Love. Nice and steal. No steal, it's a foul instead. Eliminated two points the easy way. Well, Douglas Roberts wants to follow up Taggart. I tell you, there was one beautiful move by Rose. Well, just to get the shot off. To be yep. quite honest, you, it was almost an assist by making a shot selection that was almost impossible. And just after he'd gone behind the back. So now Love will go to the line for two shots. The most outstanding player of the West Regional, the Pac-10 Player of the Year. That's Western Kentucky. He's in this NCAA tournament, 29 points, 14 rebounds, four assists, four blocks. He just has a total game for a man this young that plays in the low post. Antonio Anderson in for Rosen. What about the shuttling and the rotation of the guards for Memphis? I mentioned uh, Andre Allen uh, suspended and left back home in Memphis. What will that do for Coach Calipari? I still think he is the deeper of the two teams, Jim, coming in with quality players, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. Mata Real comes back in, so does Keefe, so Love will sit. Mba Mute to the bench. But you're bringing in two players that have limited offensive skills and taking two players out that have great experience and quite a bit of skill. See, as an example, Taggart out, Dozer in. That, that's really, I realize Dozer's the better of those two, but uh, now it's going to be Dorsey, Dorsey instead. So that's a nice threesome that John Calipari is rotating. Memphis has gone eight deep in this game. 5.23 to go in the first half. Kemp back here with Collison. Advantage Collison. Rose on the bench. Anderson wants a little bit of ship here. Feeds it to Taggart over Monterreal. Well, the Iowa State grad has come on strong, hasn't he, Jim? Yeah, he transferred after Coach Morgan left the program there at Iowa State against Texas last week five for seven 12 points three rebounds not much of a fall off when he comes in the game particularly in the offensive end he's got seven points in this first half two men on one somebody's open it's Real now it's ship kind of slippery on that floor right there on that end Keith tries to kick it out traveling call against the Bruins should Americans be worried about Chinese billions bailing out Wall Street? Plus, did you know American astronauts are going back to the moon as tomorrow on 60 Minutes? Jim, if I were Ben Holland, I'd ask for that floor to be swept down a little bit on, on his offensive end because guys are slipping quite frequently. But Tiger getting good, good set up on the inside. Anderson wanting a screen. Anderson short with the shot. Monterreal with a good aggressive rebound. Anderson's had some pretty good looks at the basket. That shot should have been made. Spin move, Westbrook rolls it in. 
This kid has come on so big time his sophomore year. There's no question that, that was a big, big move for UCLA because they don't have a lot of scoring on the floor right now. That's just knocked out, no foul. Last touched by UCLA. So Memphis will have it coming up out of the break. Tigers with the five-point lead. One of the stories in this game, Kevin Love, the decorated freshman for the Bruins, has been somewhat neutralized. Six points, four rebounds, a couple of turnovers. He's not taken a shot, Billy, in the last eight minutes. Jim, the reason for that is this game is being played from top of the key to the top of the key. There is so much movement by Memphis to get the ball moving up the, down the court quickly. Kevin Love likes to play in the half-court situation. His game has basically not been played that way. Oh, nice step under. And Collison collides with Rose. I don't think they can afford to have Collison on, on Rose. He's just too big and strong for him. It's the first foul on Collison. Coming up, AT&T at the half with Greg and Clark, Seth, and Florida head coach Billy Donovan. They'll break down the first half, plus the awarding of the player and coach of the year and an AT&T Naismith watch update coming up on AT&T at the half. So Rose. <laughs> Shoot a couple. Jim, we saw this young man last weekend. 27 against Michigan State, 21 against Texas, six rebounds, nine assists in that ball game. Just a floor generalship was just outstanding. You think of him as a power scorer, but he has developed into a terrific point guard leader. And he was the most outstanding player of his regional, like Love was out west. Anderson on Collison using that size. Collison ought to try to put the ball on the floor and beat him off the dribble, get something started inside for Love. Here's Collison with the ball. Ball tipped. And the Bruins fortunate back into the hands of Collison. Five on the shot clock. That's what Collison needs to keep that dribble alive. Mbamute with one second on the shot clock is fouled. They said it was impossible for four number one seeds to make it the final four. Then again, they said it was impossible to get real Coke taste and zero calories. Log on to MyCokeRewards.com and get lots of great NCAA gear. That's the second foul, Billy, on Dorsey here with 3.12 to go in the half. Yeah, he'll have to sit down, but again, Taggart's going to come in, and he has played extremely well. Mbamute from Cameroon. His parents are here tonight. The first time they've ever seen their son play a basketball game over here in the States. Jim, remember his freshman year, he talked about sending them a DVD of the final four, yeah. and his parents said, that looked like that was a big event. And they, if we didn't know that, that was that big, we would have come. And uh, so this year, fortunately, they have come to see him play for the very first time. He's the first Bruin to start in three final fours consecutively since Bill Walton, Keith Wilkes, Greg Lee. Three pretty fair players. Yeah, and the first player from any program since Andre Hudson and Charlie Bell of Michigan State back in 01. Can't leave him open. Nope. Douglas Roberts knocks down a three. And Jim, when you mention those three players, you have to think of UCLA Memphis because Keith Lee had 14, uh, I mean, Lee had 14 assists in that ball game. Walton was the famous 21 of 22 from the field. All that spins out on Westbrook. Underneath, Memphis comes out with it again. It's CDR. Here goes Anderson. Trying to take middle, but Collison shut off the angle. And Collison has blazing speed. His parents both sprinters. And he got back and, and stymied what could have been an easy layup. Billy, do you sense it's a dangerous time right here with two and a half to go for the Bruins? Oh, Collison tries to make the steal. Comes up with it with a quick hand, but stepped out. That was a tough break for UCLA. I, and I'll tell you why, Jim. As Dozier wants to put the ball and challenge the guy like Collison. That's a mistake. Get that ball back in Rose's hands because uh, he's been able to keep Collison at bay. They're going to bring in on the Memphis side Pierre Niles, the 6'8 sophomore, homegrown talent from Memphis. Collison in this game, Billy, 0 for 3 from the field. Collison who averages 15 a game. Well, I think he needs to keep his dribble more alive when he gets those double teams by the Memphis big people because that'll get the ball to love. Do you sense it's a dangerous time or not? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I think that uh, UCLA is an experienced club. You've got love back in the ball game and he's fresh. They got to get him the ball some on offense. Memphis has had some big closes to first halves this year. Douglas Roberts swatted away by Love. Not a great
great shot blocker, but if he can be waiting on you, it'll work. Shit with the left hand. And it's a foul call on Memphis. It's on Taggart. His first. Jimmy, you see Love with that block very close to on the way down. Now, in the first 23 games this year, he only had 17 blocks. It, and, and since that time, in the last 14 games, he's had 30 blocks. So getting much more accustomed to his low post defensive job. That one was very close to being on the way down, particularly in the fact that Douglas Roberts gets way up when he releases the ball on those penetrating moves. Dozier coming back on the floor for Memphis. Niles back to the bench. Ship who hit those three pointers early in this game. Wide of the mark with his first free throw. Now one more. Now he's down to 32% from three, but still a pretty good free throw shooter at 78%. Looked uncomfortable though with those yep. two. Love moves out high now, goes back down into the paint. Close in on Taggart. He takes the jumper over. Very little offensive rebounding threats uh, for Memphis. Their guards are getting back to stop the break. Nobody penetrating inside. They could get some offensive rebounds. That's a foul on Taggart, so he picks up two quickly. Two on him, two on Dorsey. It'll be a one and one. Well, with one, 125 to go, you might have to put both of them down. Here's Derrick Rose, Billy, again starring. Flawless first half by this young man. That was a brilliant move by Westbrook. Conference USA Freshman of the Year, first team all Conference USA. Most assists by a freshman in Memphis history. He's got nine points to assist. His love will be rewarded with one more. And Jim, in that game in, in 06, in which UCLA scored 50 points, they were 20 for 39 from the foul line. Just think of that in a 20 of your 50 points from the foul line and almost shooting only 50%. So you don't win many games like that. Rose getting away from Collison. Now over Love. Oh, wow. The pass Collison over Love. I, I think that Love felt that he was going to make a pass on that and not put that ball over him. He never left the floor. Back to a seven point margin. Down low. Love waits. Follow up, yes. One of the best in college basketball at second chance points. Well, you're talking about Rose putting on a show right here against one of the quickest defensive guards in the country. Well, there's a tip and an offensive rebound. And there's a seven second differential and a timeout called by Memphis. And Rose is complaining that he was hit on the arm on that jumper. But what a first half for the young man from Chicago. Jim Nance with Billy Packer here in San Antonio and coming up Kansas and North Carolina. Jayhawks have won 11 consecutive. North Carolina's won its last 15. They will meet for the fourth time in history in the NCAA tournament. Of course, that famous 1957 triple overtime championship game won by Carolina. Will Chamberlain, the outstanding player on the losing side. Yep, an undefeated North Carolina team coached by Frank McGuire. Played two games in the final four, both triple overtimes, beating Michigan State in the semis. Taggart regains the handle, now gives it up. Douglas Roberts for Westbrook. And the Bruins tip it around and keep it. Nope. On the floor, Dozier. Pass deflected. And Love says, I will take it. Not a good idea considering the fact he could have held it for the last shot. Not a good play by Anderson. Hollison left alone, and he has a field goal for the first time tonight. That was a foolish play. Douglas Roberts has time to launch it. This will count if it's good. Good first half here, Billy. Very good, and a nice job by UCLA to stay in there. Douglas Roberts with 13, leading all scores, and we'll be sending it back to New York. Back to Greg Gumbel when we continue on CBS. Right. Only one time Texas A&M down 29-26. They eventually went down by as far as much as 10. Came back to win that one. UCLA team that late in the year had some remarkable comebacks from double digits. And that was one of them. Here's Douglas Robertson. A reach-in call. It's going to go against Westbrook. 
And that's his second. There's Westbrook, though. Even with a post up by Chris Douglas Roberts, Westbrook doing a pretty good job. He got no help. There was no double down in there, so he had him all by himself. Memphis was blazing early in this game from the floor, but missed 20 of his last 27. And that's going the other way. And give Love great credit there. Much as we'll see Tyler Hansborough doing the next game, instead of trying to block the shot, he played for position defense. Terrific job by the freshman. And that's now two on Douglas Roberts. So some issues here. Another Tiger picks up a third. Dorsey or Douglas Roberts. Taggart's on the bench with two. That was good judgment on Love's part. And he and Dorsey are really banging inside. Dorsey does a good job keeping him off the boards. Bob Mute had UCLA's first basket, but misses his last five shots. And this is Sun Rose. Went to the line for two. Rose has that look, doesn't he, Billy? Like he thinks he can take him every single time. Well, what I like, Jim, is that he plays under control, but yet he plays with speed and power. Collison, who is a tremendous defender, as we know, really can't handle the size and the upper body strength of Rose when he takes him inside. That's now two on Collison. I don't like that matchup at all, to be quite honest with you. I, I think that I think that Ship should go over and, and guard. Chris Douglas Roberts and get Westbrook on Rose. Rose has got the ball in his hand so much more than, than uh, anybody else does on the team, and I think Westbrook's the best matchup. Rose hits them both. That's 13 on the night. And here on the other end, you have a guy like Anderson who's so big. Oh, there's the third on Dorsey, pushing off from behind. And John Calipari asking Dorsey to fight his way over the top, but Love does such a terrific job positioning. Now look at him spread out, get good position in there, and as strong as Dorsey is, he still can't get over the top. He has to go out, and Taggart with two fouls comes in. See how much more effective UCLA is, UCLA is when they can play half court at a time. Oh, look at this. This is on Taggart. Just like boom, that, boom. two big guys from Memphis, not even a... Five seconds. Well, they didn't, even, they didn't even start the clock. They never inbounded the ball. So well, there, there's Love's upper body strength clearing things out. So three on Taggart now. I'm surprised UCLA hasn't tried to go to a more down inside. Well, they're going to try to get it over here to Love and pick up a fourth on Taggart. Westbrook, that got away from him. There's that length again. Rose. There's Hands it off. Douglas Roberts. You are not going to finish any better than Memphis does on the college level. Whether Chris Douglas Roberts, Dozier was on the other side, Anderson can as well. Timeout UCLA. Four points right out of the half for the Tigers. Thursday on CBS, new rivals emerge on an all-new Survivor at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Foul situation for Memphis. Taggart and Dorsey picking up their third. Westbrook has a couple. Collison, two for UCLA. Jim, all the more reason for UCLA to say, okay, this is Love's game for the next four or five minutes. Pound the ball to him inside. Wait till he gets open. Use some clock up. A little full court pressure here by Memphis. Bruins break it by getting it ahead to Love. And they use Dozier on Love right now. Dozier's got size, but doesn't have the strength to handle him. Love, he can shoot the three. And that rattles out. Rose crashing in for the rebound. Again taken off. Ball got away from him. Good hands by Taggart. Dozier. Flip shot back of the rim. Drops. There's that length again. Great hit ahead pass. Westbrook. Ah! Gets the layup. Pass two flying Tigers. There has not been a college basketball player of size that can throw the outlet pass like Love can. He looks and he looks for it all the time. Good breakout. We have the size differential again, Jim. Douglas Roberts on Collison. Just too much length. And again, the soft roll. 17 now for Douglas Roberts. I don't understand that matchup. Largest lead of the game now for Memphis. Love outside. You want him in the low post. Schiff, who hit two shots early. Not this time. And Bob Mute off his fingertips. Get exclusive insight into college basketball's biggest night of the year, the National Championship pregame show presented by Sheridan. It's Monday night on the new CBS College Sports Network. So now Memphis looking for a double-digit lead. This 
is a better matchup for UCLA. Ship at least has some size. Lob underneath. Love is able to force the steal into the arms of Keith. Much better matchup. Collison lost the dribble. Dozier flips it ahead. Westbrook, though, with a nifty move to steal it back. It's going to be on Dozier. Pretty nice job by Keith to hold his position inside. And how about the anticipation by Westbrook? You know, that's a talent in itself. Everybody talks about physical abilities, but when a guy has great anticipating skills, as Westbrook does, he saved an easy basket there. We had only 10 fouls called between the two teams in the whole first half. Already six whistles the first three minutes of the second half. There's a second on Dozier. Allison with a great crossover dribble. And no, Love comes in. Rose has it. No numbers, though, and he takes it up himself. Goes against Ship. Jim, one of the things that we saw last weekend is this emphasis as a team and individually incredible ability to finish because of their length and their ability from a standpoint of just being bigger than other people. Think about it. Abrams, Augustine, and Mason for Texas. They were 13 for 42. Just too small to play against this threesome on the floor for Memphis. Knightso, Lucas, and Walton for Michigan State had the same kind of problems. They never could get good looks. And these guys were able to just finish every time they got on the break. Boye comes in for the first time for UCLA. Bob Mute returns. One more for Rose. And one thing about Rose all season long, he was just terrific as a freshman. But now you get to the tournament, it's like he's decided, you know what, I can take this over now. Yeah, and I think he is, John Calipari has done a great job with him, breaking him in now to the point that he is the ball handling guard that controls the game. I just love his attitude and his uh, his knowledge of the game. This marks the largest deficit of the entire NCAA tournament for UCLA. Not, still not getting the ball to love down in low. Westbrook. And that one was touched, but still goes in. You think he could wear a uniform, a white uniform, and be just fit right in with Memphis the way he plays? He's, he's having a big long, night. Yes, he's got that long ability to finish. 15 for Westbrook. In a UCLA team that hasn't panicked all season when it's faced a double-digit deficit in the second half, and particularly even late in the year. Six double-digit comeback wins. Douglas Roberts off balance. Nice job by Aboyo, and he's off and running. Well, what a pass. Zimba Mute can't finish. Those are defending. Second try, no. It's Love. Taggart can't stop him. There's where UCLA is so effective in this game and can take it away from Memphis if they can start playing down in the low paint with the ball. Rose wants it again, gives it up to Taggart. Takes the three, and he, they called for a three-second violation. John Calipari going to bring Dorsey back in the ball game with three fouls. Break in the action, just under 15 minutes to play. Memphis, 48-41. Up to an 11-point lead, it's now seven. Ball belongs to UCLA. How about this backcourt play for Memphis? Well, Rose has been sensational in this ball game. There's the dish and there's the finish. Too much length for the inside play for Collison to be able to stay with Douglas Roberts. Dorsey back in the game, Jim. Jim, you know, uh, we talk about the history of this Final Four. The legendary Adolf Rupp won 30 games three straight years. You know the two coaches sitting on the sidelines right now? Yeah, the only other two. Only other two guys ever to do that. Just think of all the great coaches that have gone down through the years. And since Adolf Rupp, the two guys sitting on the sidelines, first to go. Westbrook denied and up ahead alone is Anderson. There's a poor, poor balance. By UCLA, Collison should have been back. Westbrook trying to take things over offensively, Jim, and still not getting the ball to Love. I think that they ought to have the ball in Love's hands every time down the floor. Love with the outside shot, but missed two from that same spot. Flying through as Collison make the steal, and the arrow belongs to the Bruins. 
Great hustle by Collison going on that floor. The young man's had his problems tonight. There's that long pass because it was no defensive balance. When Westbrook went inside on the drive, Collison's got to circle back out, take away that long pass. Matt coming in for Memphis. Coach Calipari told me yesterday morning that he could be the difference. He's going to need to step up with the absence now of Andre Allen. UCLA shooting just 30% here in the second half. Collison again just held to that one basket before the intermission. There's that great crossover dribble. You can keep that ball alive on the dribble. Mute. Back up. Yes. That's his first field goal since the opening basket of the game. Jim, with Amute in there and Love in there and Aboyo in there, UCLA needs to get this ball game played on the glass. Get down inside with it. The perimeter favors Memphis. Double up on Rose. Ball squirts out to Dozier. Tipped out Collison. Bruins trying to make a little run. Fake the pull up three. Aboya inside. UCLA brings it within five. John Calipari calls the timeout. He wanted to foul on the other end, but his team just got out hustled. 50 to 45, the exact score. UCLA beat Memphis in a regional final two years ago. Sitting next to Billy Packer, Jim Nance here in San Antonio. Billy coming up. It's been talked about all week. Roy Williams going against his old Kansas Jayhawk squad. Well, two of the most storied programs in the history of basketball right there, Kansas and North Carolina. And uh, it, interestingly, they've only played eight times in the history of that. Of Dean Smith never wanted to play against Kansas. And of course, there's so many connections between those two teams in regard to coaches and star players. Third time, though, they'll meet in the Final Four since 91. And again, improvising, it's Douglas Roberts. Now, Love has not been out of this ball game in the second half. In a high-paced ball game, that's asking an awful lot of him to run this court at the pace Memphis wants to play. That's why I think hold the ball a little bit and get it to him down low. The baseline, a boy has jumper back to the rim. Love just not getting touches, Jim. I think for a guy that's averaging 18 a game, we find a way to get him somehow a little more involved. While Rose handling it exclusively at this end. Crashing in, Dorsey puts it on the floor. Finds the outlet. Anderson, three, no. Dorsey getting good position. It's going against UCLA. Not Dorsey over the back instead of Boya for pushing off. Jim Dorsey did a terrific job there. Just playing position, rebounding, not pushing with his hands. Goes up with two hands to get that rebound. That was great work on the offensive glass. His attitude has been so stellar here in the last month. Showing great leadership. It was Roberts. That's Westbrook. That's going to be three on Westbrook. The first Bruin to have a little serious issue. Today is your last chance to vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the tournament. At Pontiac.com slash NCAA, a $100,000 scholarship is on the line. So vote. Was Roberts, who had quite a go of it in Houston at the free throw line in those two games, Billy. Well, I, I have said uh, since watching this team in midseason that I felt that they had good form on their free throw shooting as a team. They had no business being down under 60%. It was a matter of uh, just a lack of concentration. But let's, the last 10 champs have averaged over 70% free throw shooting. And remember, Connecticut in 04 was at 62%. Memphis now 9 of 10 for the game at the line. Robertson made 25 free throws at the regional in Houston in two games. Let's see if Collison with that crossover dribble can beat Rose. Gives it up quickly. Love has made one basket in this half underneath. Bob Mute with a nice move. Bob Mute is uh, getting to be pretty active in this ball game offensively now looking for his shots. a much better matchup size-wise for Chris Douglas Roberts. That's Rose on Collison. Just can't stop the young man, can they? Well, Collison now, he has three. 
Rion Collison, Rion Westbrook, Douglas Roberts has 21 to lead the way. Field goal percentage is Billy about the same. About the backcourt scoring is the margin. Yeah, here. that that is huge right there. We're talking about three players on each team, but you can see that. Memphis getting much better of that and fast break points and I mentioned earlier UCLA on the year 498 fast break points to their opponents only got 185 completely reversed here by Memphis doing a good job getting on the break. Some words exchanged between Dorsey and Love. Had a pretty good piece of officiating right there. You don't want to call a foul on either one of those guys. Just talk it over and get moving. And again Collison and Westbrook now each with three. How much better a matchup it is. Rose respects Westbrook, so he looks to get that ball to somebody else. rosier has been shaky when he gets the ball on the perimeter. Rozier not down in here. Yeah, trying to back in on ship. Love comes over to help. Surprised there was a double. Rose works his way in to the lane. Spin with the left hand. No, gets a second chance underneath. And Joey Dorsey's the one that kept that ball alive without committing the foul on the offensive glass. Good job that he's done since he's come back in here with three fouls. Jim, I realize he's done a lot of points, but he's doing a good job moving that body. The nine-point lead. They've had a good working margin the entire half. UCLA just reluctant to figure out how to get the ball to love down inside. Oh, a stutter step move. Mute follow no. And Dozier says. It's mine. There's that length again. I really um, do not understand why Love is not getting the touches. He only has three shots in the second half. Love, and it got away from Dorsey. Remember Dorsey last year going up against Greg Oden in Ohio State said it's going to be David Goliath, and I am Goliath. And, yeah. uh, you know, everything didn't work out his way. He just lost the handle on that one. But I'll tell you, his attitude is so much better this year, showing outstanding leadership. That was right here in the Alamo Dome. Yes, it was. Where their season ended last year in the regional final loss to Ohio State. One of their slogans all season long is, remember the Alamo Dome. They wanted to end their season here again this year, but this time with a win on a Monday night. Love sits down. Westbrook inside, and that was well crafted by Ben Hallen's team. Love sits down right now, so UCLA is going to have to get their points from the three perimeter players that are out there. Ship is going to have to step up and start looking for some baskets. 17 for Westbrook. Here's Packer back on the floor. Great matchup here. He's showing some respect for Westbrook. Anderson, tough shot, fading the other way. Hey Jim, if he's six foot two as that other guard, he never even gets that off. But he's six six and he plays big. Goes inside, not afraid to put it up. The boy is not going to shoot out there. Ship has got to get open and look for some shots. Westbrook pass picked off by Dorsey. Snaps it up ahead to Douglas Roberts. Back over Anderson. Nice, nice idea. Trailer Tagger is it to the last man down the court, Rose, and that's a foul against Montreal. What a great decision by Anderson. He really didn't have any good shot. Realized UCLA had gotten back fairly well. Waited till he had something easy. It'll be a one and one at the line. Montreal with his first. Jim Bob at nine, coming back in. At 9:04, Ben Holland's got to be thinking about coming back in love with love for one stretch drive here. You asked me earlier in the ball game, are things starting to flow in a bad direction for UCLA? I'd say they are right now. Dozier back in for Taggart. Yep, Taggart hasn't gotten in any more foul trouble, nor has Dorsey. Maybe Coach Howland trying to keep Love down until they get that under eight break, the free timeout. One and one, Douglas Roberts. And here he comes right now. Okay. <laughs> we can't wait any longer. No, we we're on the same wavelength, and I think a great move by. Ben Holland here. He's got to. Uh, he's got to get some scoring power in there. Aboyo is not going to give it to him. Mm -hmm. 
Young man's pretty cool on that foul line, isn't he, Jim? He, he is, really knows how to play. Everywhere on the court, yep. actually. And just the second miss at the line on the night for the Tigers. Dropped his arm a little bit on that one on his follow through. Can the Bruins come back from 10 down with nine minutes left? There's Ship, passed up the three. Driving in, kicking back out. Now Ship will take it from the corner. Important shot, rattled out. He's down for a second, bounced out. No field goals for Ship since three and a half minutes into the game. He hit those two early threes. How about the knowledge of Rose right there? Realizing the break wasn't there, pulled it back out. Rose. Monterreal says, let's go the other way. UCLA doesn't have to panic. There's plenty of time here, but they've got to get touches to their big man. Again, so much experience, especially here late in the year with these double-digit comebacks where they never did panic. So they've got fast experience with this. Ship not looking to catch and shoot the jumper quickly. And there's Charge. a charge on Collison. And that is number four and on the Bruins' point guard. Beautiful job by Do Dozier to move his feet. Got the timeout under eight. Collison now in danger. Picks up his fourth right here. And Memphis by 10. Just 7.53 to go. And the margin is 10 for Memphis. Shutting down Darren Collison. Just collected foul number four. Billy, he's only one out of seven from the field tonight, is Collison, and five turnovers. Jim, what's new in regard to small backcourt men against Memphis? Drew Neitzel was two for eight. Remember, those two came in about the last minute and 30 seconds. DJ Augustine, the All American, four for 18 against Memphis. So you can see that these long, rangy Memphis defensive guards have really caused problems for smaller guards, even those that have quickness as Augustine and Collison have. Collison has to sit, probably stay out for the five minute mark. Westbrook will have to handle it at the point. Keefe has come in, replaced Collison on the floor. And Douglas Roberts again gets the shot off, and it's tipped out going to UCLA. Now you take a look. This is probably a little better offensive club that UCLA has on the floor than they had when Aboyo was out there. But again, Love with only three touches in this second half has to get the ball. Billy hasn't taken a shot since a 15-15 mark. That shot retrieved. And the basket counts. Ship on a nice move inside, aggressively went to the basket. Love took the shot in his first attempt in almost eight minutes. They kept the possession alive. It's a good drive by Ship. Ship, as we know, has had all kinds of problems with those hips. And he had two free throw attempts in the first half, both woeful. And for the three point play to bring him within seven, and he gets it. It's a pretty good offensive lineup that they have on the floor right now. And I'm talking about UCLA. Can they get the stops? That foul was on Rose. He has two. Size-wise, the matchup's much better for UCLA. Collison out of the ball game. Anderson cutting through. Tipped out to Dozier. Mbaa <laughs> Mute skying for that one. Now Westbrook, who has to handle it. Nice patience, though, by Westbrook. And here's where it helped when Collison was out. Westbrook had to have that point guard responsibility. And it showed right there. Keith with a three from the corner. Almost, but it's only Dorsey underneath. Again, UCLA reluctant to go inside first and then go out. UCLA three out of ten from three in this game. Miss Roberts. Good block. Not blocked. Bob Mute with some big defensive plays. John Calipari, good job of officiating on the side. He made the call. He was going to make sure he got that call. Collison already back out. 6.22 to go. I thought they might wait, Jim, to the five-minute mark, particularly at seven here. And they were doing a pretty good job with their matchups. Now, if you're Memphis, you don't want to become too patient here. They've missed the last five from the floor. Close. Good block out by Love. Dozier touched it last. It goes to UCLA. 
Well, if they could come down and hit a three, Keith had a chance to do it. Well, one Suddenly of the, the game would be four. One of the things that has uh, cost Love a little bit, Dorsey has, with his incredible strength, has been able to work him down inside and put a lot of pressure on him. And of course, the pace of the ball game earlier made him run up and down the floor. So he's not as fresh as uh, UCLA would like him to be. Six minute mark. Down seven. Allison, big shot, three, no. Well, Keith got what he wanted. Collison got good look. Memphis not playing as tough a defense as I've seen them play. Those were two yep. good looks from behind the arc, and they misfired on both. Well, the Texas players are probably saying, the Michigan State players, how come we didn't see some looks like that? Memphis has not made a shot now in over four minutes, and that's a hand to the face. It'll be called on ship. That's number two on ship. Thursday on CBS. Don't miss a riveting new episode of TV's most watched drama, CSI. It's Thursday at 9, 8 Central, only on CBS. We've got a one-on-one -on -one at the line with Douglas Roberts. We missed his last free throw, but it's five of six for the game. Jim, much too early to think about it, but coaches around the country when Memphis moved in number one in spot were thinking about the hack of shack techniques to put them on that foul line. But since they've been shooting well in the NCAA tournament, it hasn't happened, but maybe. Just maybe that'll catch up with them here. Of course, they were shooting well, Billy, when they had comfortable leads. Right. Like against Texas when they made 18 free throws in the last four minutes, but really they were never in danger. Pressure free. So a blown opportunity in the front end of that one and one. They were 30 of 36 in that game, 87%. Now look. They'll take the jumper. Maybe he's a little tired. I the think shot's so. coming up short, Billy. I think so. And, and credit Dorsey for that because he's been pushing him on both ends of the floor all night. Been leaning on him all evening. Yep. Back door they go. Douglas Roberts dumps it down. <laughs> Terrific offensive set right there for Memphis. But you got to have a finisher <laughs> to design a play like that. UCLA had three consecutive empty trips. Down seven, and this time it's Mba Mute keeping it alive and a foul first. The experience of Mba Mute, Jim, is really showing this guy is a winner. And there was the backdoor cut, perfect bounce execution. And then there's that finishing ability. The other end, that's the third foul on Rose. Dozier's coming in for Taggart. Or is he? No, it's going to be Dorsey. Dorsey now. They're not sure. I, I don't think they're sure who's coming in. It is going to be Taggart coming out. Still plenty of time here. Having a hard time getting it in. Oh, that was awful close. Oh, ben Holland almost got a timeout. Ship. And that's going to Memphis. Jim, when Ship shoots his shot, he's not staying with the follow through. It's almost as if he anticipates it's not going in. Bruins have just been really tight from the outside yep. here in the late going. Love just got a little piece of that ball. Boy, you feel comfortable if you're a Memphis fan when Rose has that ball in his hands. Calipari wanting to work a little clock and make UCLA really have to run on defense. There's a big solid screen. Dorsey got away. They got it to him on the blocks. Love defending and blocking. Two on the shot clock. Douglas Roberts realizes it. Boy, that was right on line but long. Now Westbrook driving in on Rose. And Dorsey at the other end denies. Rose with the save back in bounds. How about the big guy, Jim? Gets his, the ball blocked in one end. He is just playing really great team ball. Terrific hustle on his part. Had caused some problems for John Calipari in his career earlier, but he's showing leadership out there now. Collison goes for the steal. Has to be careful with the four fouls. Rose How did got the spin off? from right underneath the cylinder. They've now worked it back up to match their largest lead of the game. 
Allison inside. He was making that shot against AM when they came back to win, but not this time. No field goal the last four minutes for the Brewers. Well, Collison and Westbrook both trying to take things one on one. You don't want to be reaching against Rose. Why would Collison do that? That fouls out. That's it for him. Yep. Why would he do that? Collison has fouled out. has been flustered all night long by the Memphis guards and this is the same story again we saw in the Sweet 16 against Michigan State at Knights Hole against Texas and Augustine in the regional final and now Collison tonight he has finished for the evening one out of nine from the field and five turnovers the two points a season low Jim that size differential is so difficult against this Memphis team this three backcourt players for Memphis all play long and they're all 6'3 or better. A tough matchup for a guard in the six foot range. We're in the double bonus the rest of the way for Memphis. I didn't understand that last foul on no. Collison. It was so not. far away from the basket, and it was as if it was the last 30 seconds of a game of the desperation. Foul. Yeah, he is a much more experienced player than to make a foul like that. His team needs him on the floor. You know, Collison, the MVP of the Pac 10 tournament, had 28 points and no turnovers against Stanford. So a much better player than he showed tonight. Westbrook love trying to get a handle on it Keith and he's fouled on the way up that's Rose that reached in there in the foul well that'll be four on him now you're talking about 242 to go John Calipari looking around right here Westbrook he, of UCLA is limping uh, around out there on the floor he's hurt uh, no Andre Allen is not available but how what do you figure Kemp Willie Kemp who was their starter last year I, I, I'm surprised that John Calipari is going to keep Rose on the floor. I think his assistants are talking to him right now. Keith banks home the first free throw. And they take Dorsey out. And again, Taggart and Dorsey shuttling in and out. Figure he called that bank? I will know after <laughs> this one. <laughs> if he does it again, yes. Young man with the McDonald's All American getting some playing time in the NCAA tournament. Full court pressure. Shaky pass. They almost were able to get a hand on it. When will they start fouling Memphis? Making them earn it at the stripe again. We've got two and a half to play. Ooh, that was a dangerous pass. It's picked off. You're going the other way. Not the guy you'd want to put on the line, though, if you had to choose one. If it touches anybody else, you've got to go after him. They don't. Go, sure. If you're Westbrook now, you might as well take that ball right to the hoop. Pull up three instead. That's a push by Keith, gets away with it. Keith has it taken away. Douglas Roberts will be shooting at the other end. Jeff. Memphis fans are starting to celebrate. Jim, think about this club from UCLA. Three straight Final Four trips for Ben Holland. They run into Florida, the top team in the country two of the years, and then they run into Memphis that's playing extremely well right now. Great seasons. Look like the championship to be denied, though. Another free throw percentage tonight. Impressive. Again, two the rest of the way. Good follow through there. And as I said, when you watch this club shoot in practice, you say it had to be just a lack of concentration. Mata Real is going to come in for the UCLA Bruins. UCLA has missed its last 10 shots. They had life at 59 52. They had a couple of open looks from three, but they've missed their last 10 shots over the last five and a half minutes without a basket. Well, Jim, you know what all this would also mean in history. There's Westbrook knowing he's got to put up some shots. Jim, tip up, yes. Memphis is 37 and 1 coming into this ball game. The history of college basketball, nobody's ever won 38 games. They're bordering on it right now. It's about to happen, Billy. 90 seconds to go. It'll reach whole new territory. It'll send Rose to the line. No team ever with 
38 wins in a season in the history of college basketball. Now Duke won in 86 and 99. They won 37. UNLV won 37 and 87. Illinois, remember, had 37 wins playing against North Carolina in the championship game, but nobody has ever in the history of college basketball reached 38 wins in a season. John Calipari looks like he's got it. You know, it's interesting, all those teams you just rattled off, none of them won the championship that year. That's right. Two for two by Rose. Are you trying to tell me something about uh, Monday? No, not at all. <laughs> I am not selling this team no. short after at what, any time. After what we saw last weekend, we, neither one of us is going to sell this team short. Westbrook drives for the two and a timeout, UCLA. 71-58. Memphis again manhandling the opponent. Just a minute and 16 seconds to go and a 13 point advantage for Memphis with Kansas and North Carolina to take the floor shortly after this one. There's Ben Howland who played in two NCAA tournaments at Weber State and actually had a win. They ended up getting knocked out both years by the same team Arkansas into his NCAA tournament hopes as a player at Weber State. He was a great defender, a stopper for Coach Neil McCarthy. And uh, his assignment was the same both years against the Razorbacks. Some guy named Sidney Moncrief. Yeah, and he said he wasn't quite a stopper against Sidney yeah. Moncrief. You know, that was interesting. That year, uh, in 1979, when he got knocked out by Arkansas, I followed Arkansas the rest of the way against the great Indiana State team. And Sidney Moncrief and Larry Bird played in that great regional final in Cincinnati. With Bob Heaton out off a pass from Bird ended uh, Sidney Moncrief's incredible career at Arkansas. They had gone to the Final Four the year before, remember, with Eddie Sutton and the outstanding team they had. You didn't even realize it until yesterday at the shoot-around when we visited with Coach Allen that you had seen him play. That's right. That's right. I'll have to tell how memorable he was. <laughs> well, let's not knock no, him down. He was two-time Defender of the Year for the Weber State Wildcats. Westbrook, Dish, Bob Mute, and another timeout by the Bruins. You know when you just trading points now though we just have a little more than a minute to play before we move Memphis in the brackets to Monday night. How would you rate this performance Billy by Memphis. Uh, excellent Jim and we said at the top of the show something had to give UCLA is a team that held his opponents to 58 points a game Memphis a team that scored 80 when you look up at the scoreboard right now it was Memphis game the way they wanted to play in Ben Holland's five years. 66 opponents have been held under 60 points, and he's 64 and two in those games. Obviously, wasn't able to do it here. He's going to send Douglas Roberts back the other way. And the other story in this half: not only Collison, again tormented all evening long, but Kevin Love been shut down in the second half. Just one put back basket. That's it. Well, if from a strategic standpoint, if you're UCLA and you go look at the tape of this game. You've got Dorsey with three fouls on him. You have Taggart with three fouls on him. Love never gets touches in the second half in the low post. I think that's what cost UCLA this game. They never got an opportunity to play the game half court at a time with Love getting a lot of touches and opportunities. And maybe additional fouls put on the two big men for Memphis. Ready for this. Memphis has now hit its last 10 free throws. You know, their problem was between the years, Jim, not with holding the ball and following through. They're locked in now. Got them both. And Westbrook. That's swatted away by Dozier. Yeah, Dozier just waiting on him. And UCLA's not going to foul now. Ben Holland's going to let this game go. Three straight final fours for UCLA, but no championships brought back home. They'll be back. They'll very well be back again next year. As we said, John Wooden took 15 years to win that first uh, Final Four. I don't think it'll take Ben Holland that long. The Memphis team, so advanced on three. Good night, UCLA. A Memphis team really underappreciated by so many all season long, even though they achieved number one. They won all of those games to start the year. For a loss to Tennessee in late February. And I'll say that Tennessee loss, Jim, really helped this ball club because it got them focused back in. Another magnificent Memphis performance. We'll see you Monday night for the national championship game.